Nunji, thank you, Mr. President, for allowing me to provide the clarification on this matter. I have listened to the testimony and I feel uncomfortable with that. I actually referred to the Khmer Dictionary by some that June the 1967 publication at page 945 at line number 5. The term June is defined as a noun to refer to those who resided in Anand in Go Sang Sin. And they refer to as Yun Tong Kung, Yun Anam, and Yun Go Sang Sin. And simply, they were referred to as Yun Tong Kan or Yun Hanoi, and Yun Hanam as Yun Wei and Yun Ko Sang Sin as Yun Prey No Ko. So, Democratic Cambodia did not mean to incite anyone, and this is, and the term is clearly defined in that dictionary. And actually, Paul Potter gave instructions to us that we should not regard them as our hereditary enemy. They were our friends, but we had contradictions with them. And that is the express instructions from Paul Pot. He said that we had contradictions with them, although he did not elaborate further on those uh, contradictions. Cambodian people may consider uh, June as hereditary enemy, but uh, for Pol Pot, he uh, only said that we were friends, but we had contradictions, and I'd like to clarify at this point. And that is the point that I wish to focus on. So there is in no way there is any incitement in the regard uh, to uh, this term or that we consider the small uh, number of population of Khmer and in terms of the larger population of uh, Vietnam. And as for the military tactics, actually Pol Pot said that we should deploy a smaller number against the larger number because we had only a limited number of troops. And if one of us actually uh, shot one June and one was in June, it means they had to deploy four soldiers to carry one that wounded a soldier. And that was the militia military uh, tactics by Democratic Cambodia, and it did not in any way refer to the killing of any Jun uh, civilians. And actually, I have a question to put to the expert. Thus far, does Vietnam actually forfeit their ambition to swallow and to uh, grab the Cambodia? And my second question, also to uh, Mr. Expert, you are an American citizen, and you know that uh, actually you as a drop bomb in Cambodia for 300 days and nights, and as a result, many houses, pagodas, and infrastructures were destroyed, including the lives of Cambodian people. Do you? consider that that is a crime of war? That is all. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, uh, and I'd like to thank uh, the accused uh, for coming here uh, to express his views. I think it's very important uh, that his view is heard, his voice is heard. Um, it's been, at least from my perspective, watching too absent uh, and he has certainly his perspective should be aired uh, in these proceedings. So I'd like to start by thanking him for coming and for saying that. Um, in terms of the, and in some ways, you know, he should have the la as the defendant have the last word. But since he's asked me a couple of questions, I, I will briefly respond to them. Um, but I'll be very short. Um, in terms of 
uh, the question about uh, the Vietnamese fulfilling uh, a long-standing goal. Um, I think we've discussed in the proceedings uh, that this view, at least I've expressed the view, that this is a very standardized, reductive, teleological view of what occurred. It ignores historical and temporal and spatial variation. It reduces a complex historical and political situation uh, in a reductive manner that seems as if everyone's just guided in a singular manner towards a goal. So I, with, with respect, um, you know, I respectfully uh, would say that that's not the case. Uh, with regard uh, to the second question um, about the U.S. bombing, um, certainly people have argued that it's possible in international law. It might have violated international law, and uh, it certainly had an awful impact. Um, I think that's, that's no one would contest that. Um, and as I've said before, the bombing was part of a process of upheaval that combined with the CPK's vision of society, ultimately and unfortunately, once people were labeled as class enemies, as subversives, as counter-revolutionaries burrowing within, led to genocide. I think, you know, again, I, I thought you should have the last word. You know, you referred back to me, so maybe I'll just end by saying that I'm glad that the discussion here about the word UN hopefully can provoke critical thought and discussion about this term, its use, its connotations. I think that's a valuable uh, pedagogical exercise in general. Um, but in the end, I stand strongly by my stance that the word UN can be a very incendiary word. It's a word that can incite hatred and violence. And in the context of DK, it was an incitement to genocide. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Mr. Nguyen